Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm super excited to take a deep dive into what might just be the most powerful mini PC of 2025, the GMK Tech Evo X2 AI Max Plus 395. This tiny box claims to bring AI workstation power and serious gaming performance right to your desktop. So does it deliver? And is it worth the price? Let's find out. All right, let's get started with the unboxing experience. First off, GMK Tech ships the Evo X2 in a sturdy and minimalist box, highlighting its premium status right out of the gate. The box itself feels solid, with foam padding inside to keep everything snug during shipping. Opening it up, you're immediately greeted with the main event, the Evo X2 Mini PC, carefully wrapped in a soft protective sleeve and recessed into a custom cutout. Right away, the all-metal chassis and its heft hint at the power packed inside. Underneath the Evo X2, you'll find a second compartment housing all the included accessories. Let's take a closer look at what's inside. A quick start guide and warranty card. Nothing fancy, but it covers the basics. A large, high wattage power brick with its necessary cables. There's also an HDMI 2.1 cable, giving you plug and play access to high res displays right out of the box. Now that we've got everything out, let's take a closer look at the hardware itself and see what makes the Evo X2 so special under the hood. Let's start with the design. Now the Evo X2 is a little chunkier than previous NUC style minis, but there's a reason for that. Inside is some of the most powerful compact hardware I've ever seen crammed into a small PC. You get a sturdy aluminum chassis, a dual fan cooling setup with customizable RGB lighting using the button in front of the chassis, and plenty of venting for airflow. The whole thing weighs about 3.6 pounds and it feels solid. The main door, however, feels a bit flimsy and if pulled incorrectly, you could damage it. By the way, the fan mode button didn't do anything when I tried it. Maybe you need to use GM Kate software to get it to work, which I opted not to use. Removing the main door isn't too bad. You have to remove the two rubber feet carefully by prying it up, then remove the four screws. The main door can lift up easily after. Inside, you'll see an RGB 120 millimeter fan and an empty space for another NVMe, making upgrading storage easy. Connectivity is a definite strong suit here. On the front, you'll find a P mode button that I could not see any difference after pressing, an SDXE slot, one USB 4.0 port, two USB 3.2 10 gigabit ports, a combo headphone and microphone jack. On the back, you'll find two USB 2.0 ports, one HDMI 2.1 delivering eight gigabit, one display port 1.4 delivering 8.1 gigabit, one USB 4.0 Type-C port, one USB 3.2 10 gigabit port, 2.5 gigabit Realtek Ethernet, a combo headphone and microphone jack, DC in port, a Kensington lock port, and Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 on board. Under the hood, the star of the show is AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, packing 16 Zen 5 cores and 32 threads, boosting up to 5.1 gigahertz. You get 128 gigabytes of blazing fast LPDDR5X8000 RAM, more than most desktop workstations. However, they are soldered, so upgrade won't be possible. Storage starts at a two terabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD with a second M.2 slot for up to eight terabytes total. But the real party trick is the integrated GPU, Radeon 8060S with 40 RDNA 3.5 compute units and a dedicated XDNA2 NPU, pushing out 50 AI tops and a total of 126 tops when counting CPU and GPU. It's basically a desktop class APU smashed into a shoebox. Now let's talk about the feature everyone wants to know about, AI. The Evo X2 isn't just a workstation for pros or gamers. It's a legit local AI workstation. 
In LM Studio, the 128 gigabyte RAM makes running massive 70 billion parameter LLMs a possibility. Here are the results when tested it with the various popular LLM models. As you can see from the results, anything up to 32 billion will run just fine. And the token rates are definitely usable. Anything after that though is becoming far too slow for production use. If your goal is to run the larger parameter model locally and doesn't mind the slow token rate, then this machine definitely can do it. However, if you're looking for something a bit faster, it's probably best to hold out for the next gen of this NPU. Initially, when running the larger model, I set the VRAM to 96 gigabytes in the BIOS, but the models fail to load. I turned it back down to 64 gigabytes RAM and 64 gigabytes VRAM, and it loaded just fine. I guess this is still partitioned and not unified like the Max. For content creation, I did ran the same rendering task I usually do to test its performance. Unfortunately, this machine also did very poorly. I was unable to scrub through a 1080p timeline without lag, and the rendering for a 4-minute 1080p video took 1 hour and 37 minutes. The same video rendered at 4K took 1 hour and 45 minutes. This is definitely far too slow to do any content creation. For reference, my editing rig with a 7950X and a RTX 4090 can render the same video in 15 minutes. For gaming, I was genuinely impressed at the performance of the machine. It definitely performs much better than any other mini PC I have tested. Here are the results. All games are tested in medium presets with FSR on and frame gen off. All the games achieve frame rates that are very playable. Again, I'm very impressed with this little machine. If you spend some time to tweak the graphic settings, you can probably run some of these games on high settings. I was especially impressed with it running Helldivers 2 and Expedition 33 at those frame rates. These two games tend to bring anything without a dedicated GPU down to its knees. All that power needs real cooling. GMK Tech nailed it with a dual fan vapor chamber combo that stays surprisingly quiet. It idles under 35 decibels in performance mode and peaked at around 49 decibels when under full load. The power consumption is quite impressive with it sipping power at 10 to 13 watts idle and the maximum draw I saw was 220 watts at full load. The RGB fans are programmable with 13 lighting modes if you want to give your home office some extra flair. The only downside is it is not software controlled and instead you have to click the button on the chassis to cycle through the mode. Compared to other mini PCs like the Mac Studio M3 Ultra or upcoming B-Link and Minis Forum AI models, the Evo X2 stands out for two things, its unmatched AI acceleration and RAM capacity. The next best thing will probably be Framework Desktop, and the fact that it's the only mini PC right now that supports maxed out RAM and modern local AI workloads out of the box. Are there quirks? Sure, the RAM's not upgradable, and USB 2.0 ports in 2025 are a head scratcher. The price is also questionable, as it cost over $2,000 shipped. Speaking of which, this shipped from Hong Kong via DHL, and I had to pay additional tariffs to DHL before they will deliver it. So is it worth it? Even though I'm an enthusiast, I still feel like this is a steep price to pay for what I think is just a toy since it can't do any real workload that I need it for. So with that said, I don't ask for much. Just smash that like button to help out the channel. All right, that's my review. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see more deep dives into the latest in compact computing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.